Hey there, I'm Sean from ARRI and this is video number two about the ARRI reference tool focusing on the view room. The view room is where you can play back your clips, do a bit of image QC, and if you're working with ARRI raw files, you can also adjust the image processing settings in the view room, such as your exposure index or your white balance. On the left hand side, you'll find the same project files window from the browse room with all the clips and bins that you need for your project. In the middle of the view room is the viewing area. Here you can watch your footage and use the toolbar buttons directly above this area to change a number of viewing related parameters such as the level of zoom and the color space. On the panel on the right hand side, you can adjust different image processing settings and display metadata. At the bottom of the view room, you can find the timeline that offers different playback functionality and information about the clip or the sequence. Let's go into more detail. You'll see two versions of the timeline when you work with art. When you select a clip that is not part of a sequence, only the upper part of the timeline is shown with just the information for that particular clip. If you select a sequence or a clip that is part of a sequence, you will see an extended version of the timeline that gives you additional information about the entire sequence, such as the overall duration. And it will also give you the ability to scrub through all of the clips in that one sequence. To change the order of clips in a sequence, you have to reorganize the clips inside the sequence structure that is shown in the project files panel. The timeline toolbar gives you all the options you need to view the footage and prepare it for rendering. You can play clips forwards and backwards, step through individual frames of a clip, set in and out points, and jump to the next clip inside a sequence. You can set the playback loop mode with the loop mode button in the timeline toolbar and toggle between these options, loop over clip, play sequence once, or loop over sequence. The speed control drop-down box in the timeline area offers you the possibility to watch your clips in various playback speeds. It is normally set to the project frame rate that was set in the camera, but if you want to slow it down or speed it up, just select another speed value. If you click on the play button while the clip is already playing, the clip will play at double speed by dropping every second frame. If you press it again, the clip will play back at four times speed by displaying every fourth frame. And if you press it once again, it will play back at eight times speed by displaying every eighth frame. The duration format that is shown for the clip and the sequence can be toggled between displaying the embedded time code, the duration in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, or a frame counter. Just click on it to toggle between the different modes. On the left side of the timeline, you can also change the display format between the same options. To select them, simply hold down the left mouse button and reselect. To provide as much space as possible to view your footage, there are several options for changing the display window. You can press X to hide the panel on the left and press X again to unhide it. Pressing V will let you hide and show the panel on the right. Press the tab key to hide all elements except for the upper and lower toolbar. If you want to hide these toolbars as well, just press the tab key again to go into full screen mode. Pressing the tab key a third time will take you back to the standard view. In this toolbar, you can change the zoom factor of your image. You can zoom in with the plus magnifier button, zoom out with the minus magnifier button, or set the zoom in such a way that each pixel of the image is exactly mapped to one physical pixel of your screen. There is also a button that fits the image to the available screen size. While zoomed in, you can use your mouse to move around the image by clicking and dragging. If you're using an Apple Magic mouse, the swipe gestures can also be used for panning. While you're in the full screen mode, you can still use the zoom mode using keyboard shortcuts. Use the plus key to zoom in, the minus key to zoom out, the number one key to set the one-to-one -one zoom, and press zero to fit the image to the screen. To set a zoom factor of 200%, you can press two, 300% is three, and so forth up to 900% zoom by pressing nine on the keyboard. This is particularly quick to change if you use the numpad on your keyboard. If you need detailed information about one particular pixel, use the pixel picker button to hover over that pixel. 
In the Pixel Picker panel, the position of the pixel and the RGB values in 10 as well as 16 bits are displayed. You can take a snapshot of the image that you currently see in the view room to keep it as reference or to share it with others. Select the Snapshot button in the Viewing Toolbar area. The Save Viewer Snapshot dialog will open. Select JPEG or TIFF for your file type, choose a name and choose an output directory. As soon as you click on Save, the snapshot is automatically created. A Metadata Viewer is located in the panel on the right hand side. You can switch between the metadata and the image processing settings. By default, the panel shows all metadata. Via selection, you can choose between different pre-selections of the metadata. Later art versions will allow you to create your own set of metadata. All settings to customise your ARRI RAW files are located in the image processing panel on the right. Here you can set new values for exposure index, white balance and tint or change the image orientation. For the Alexa Mini LF and older cameras, you can also use the noise reduction, change the DBAS settings and adjust the sharpness and detail values. You can also select the input and output resolution here. I'll touch on that in a second. To provide a good overview of the settings that are in the metadata of the clip and the values that you've changed, we've introduced the so-called dot settings. When you look at a new clip, the clip settings that were set in the camera are used by default, but as soon as you change a value, you can see that the dot settings jump to manual. If you want to evaluate your changes and compare it against the original clip settings, simply click on the dot for clip and then back to the dot for manual. The sliders in the clip setting panel are designed to snap to common values that are usually used in ARRI cameras. If you need to select the slider to a position between these default values, press the ALT key before clicking and dragging the slider. This slows down the mouse movement to make it easier to make subtle changes. It's also possible to change the slider position using the mouse wheel. Hover with the mouse cursor over the slider value right next to it and use the mouse wheel to adjust the values. Alternatively, you can set a specific custom value by clicking on, for example, the white balance value and typing in a new one. Once you've changed the image processing settings of one clip, you might want to apply some of these settings to other clips. Right click on the affected clip and select copy settings. The copy processing settings dialog pops up and here you can select all the settings that you'd like to copy. To apply the copied settings to other clips, select the target clips, right click and select paste settings. To quickly render a clip into a ProRes file without having to set up a render target in the render room, you can use the quick render button. Select the button to open the quick render dialog. Select a ProRes codec flavor, a file name and the output directory for the file and click render. You can set your input and output resolution in the image processing settings panel. The input resolution is the native size of the selected ARRI RAW file in the project files panel. If there is frame line information in the metadata of this clip, you can select the frame line to only use the image data contained within it. Additionally, a custom image crop can be created and selected in art. The output format is for the rendering process. You can choose between the most common formats for post-production, use the settings from the input file or create your own custom output format. If the output format matches the input format, the clip shows the same input and output resolution. A custom output format can be defined in a couple of different ways. If you adjust the height or width, the aspect ratio will automatically be adjusted. If you'd rather define the output format via a specific aspect ratio, choose that aspect ratio and then lock it. Now you can define the height or the width and the other value will be automatically adjusted. When the input file is taller than the output file, a pillar box will be applied. When the input file is shorter than the output file, a letter box will be applied. You can choose to change this to a crop if you prefer with the fit aspect drop down menu. To create a sensor crop, select the plus button next to the input selection. The dialog add sensor crop will open. Choose a file name and set the crop position with a manual height and width or aspect ratio. Once you're finished, select add sensor crop. The image crop will automatically be applied on the current selected clip in the view room. 
All right, that brings us to the end. The next video will be about the look room. If you have any questions, please chuck them in the comments section down below or you can email us at digitalworkflow at Thanks very much. We'll see you in the next one.